Welcome into the Inside Scoop. I am live from the On3 studios here in Nashville, Tennessee. It is Sunday, April 21st, and we are going to recap another big weekend. We had spring games. We had big visits. We had everything that comes with it. We're also going to go out and get some information from the transfer portal. Pete Nakos has it all. It's been going crazy in the portal. But first, let's talk about the biggest developments of the weekend. We got On3 Steve Wolfong here to highlight the most important developments that happen over the weekend. But first, college football recruiting fans, do me a favor right now. Hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. Recruiting is just starting to heat up. We need you to get on board. All right, let's bring on On3 Steve Wiltfong. And Steve, let's head to Tallahassee. Florida State spring game was this weekend. The talk of Tallahassee was at the running back position, both on the field and recruiting. So let's talk about who was in town Two of the top running back targets for the Seminoles, Byron Lewis and Usman Chroma. Let's start with Byron Lewis. He's one of the top in-state backs in the state of Florida. Um, he has an OV set late for Florida State in the summer. What are you hearing on his recruitment? Are we going to have to wait until that official visit to get a decision from Byron Lewis? Well, I think Florida State's the team to beat in this recruitment right now, but he's also very high on Ohio State in Miami and there was a time where I liked the Buckeyes as well so this recruitment has been fluid but I think this spring Florida State has really emerged as the program to beat here and he had another fantastic visit in Tallahassee he said the every the environment was everything that he thought it would be high energy good vibes he loves coach David Johnson enjoys being around coach Norvell sees the work that the Florida State football team puts in, feels like it's a very dedicated program that's playing to a championship level standard. And he could see himself in that environment, has a great relationship with that coaching staff, but also said he does with Ohio State and Miami. So we'll see what happens moving forward. But as I talk to you today, I really like the Seminoles right now. All right. Also on campus was running back Usman Chroma, top 100 back from Georgia. Now, he was Florida State was really the first everything for him. They were the first to offer him. They were the first to really show him love, show him all that attention. Uh, but as his recruitment has worn on, the Georgia Bulldogs are also heavily involved. It feels like to me, this is an FSU Georgia battle. How do you read it? Well, I just know he's been to Florida State a few times and he really likes the Seminoles a lot. This is a guy that's at the top of a lot of recruiting boards right now. And he took a lot of visits this spring. Mm -hmm. uh, Florida State is a place that he's been a couple times this calendar year. So there's no question he's high on the Seminoles, but they're going to have to battle to get him in the fold. Yeah, and I saw that with his official visits, he has FSU set for early June. He has UGA for late June. Is that kind of a sign, I think, where things stand? Do you think that Florida State might have some work to do down the stretch for Chroma? Well, I don't read into the when is an official visit compared to others because sometimes guys put their favorite official, their favorite program official visit first, and then they commit and they cancel all those other trips. But to your point, sometimes schools just slide into that official visit early and throw the Hail Mary and hope it moves moves them up the ladder in the recruitment. Uh, but normally those are ones that get settled, uh, scheduled rather quickly. It's pretty obvious he's high on both of these programs here. And we'll see what happens after he takes the official visits. All right, real quick, who do you think Florida State's in better shape with? Which one of their running back targets? Well, if I had to make a prediction today, I would definitely predict Byron Louie to Florida State. I think that they are the program clearly to beat for him heading into the summer, uh, but certainly wouldn't be surprised if they landed any of these targets. They also had J.P. Powell on campus from Colquitt, Georgia, Josh. He's another running back target that had an amazing experience uh, at Florida State this weekend, too. So they're in the mix for quite a few running backs. Yeah, they are. It was kind of the talk of the weekend, as I said earlier. Uh, let's talk a little flip target right now. Defensive lineman Jalen Wiggins. We've talked about him on the show. He goes six foot five, two hundred and thirty-five pounds. He's from Tallahassee, committed to the Florida Gators, but was back on campus this weekend. What are you hearing about Wiggins after yet another visit to FSU? Yeah, because he was at Legacy Day earlier this spring, and there's no question he loves the environment around campus. I talked to him after that Legacy Day visit. And he's been keeping close tabs on this program, loves the way that they've developed players at the point of attack on the defensive side of the football. And Florida State certainly has not let up here. This is about as well-rounded a kid as you're gonna find in the class. You know, 
programs, powerhouse football programs to powerhouse academic programs, lining up to sign Jalen Wiggins. Florida State's one of them, and they're definitely going to have a shot to flip him. All right, now this isn't a flip, but offensive lineman Peyton Joseph, he just decommitted from Florida right before the weekend. Is he another one that FSU could add in the trenches here soon? Well, I think that they're in great position, you know, led by Coach Alex Atkins and the way that he connects with these offensive line targets, but also the way that they play on Saturdays. You know, he visited campus recently and really uh, raved about the brotherhood that the the team has and uh, that the coaches are are building and developing young men to be the best player they can be on the field. But he also just loves uh, what they do for them off the field. He's very comfortable at Florida State. I think they're trending right now, but we'll see what happens uh, as he continues through his process. All right, a lot going on at Florida State. Seems like recruiting is about to start heating up. All right, Trey McNutt. Number 10 class right now, Joshua. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, they're sitting there. They're, they're, they're working. Number 10 class. Trey McNutt, the Shaker height safety and five-star prospect. Ohio State lean. He visited Oregon this weekend. Can the Ducks lure him out of the state of Ohio? Yeah, I would not call him an Ohio State lean. I would say the Buckeyes are one of four programs that are in best position. Oregon's another one that's very high up on his list. Mm -hmm. So's USC and so's Texas A&M. He's going to take official visits this summer. Oregon's going to get one. Would not be surprised if that's the weekend of June 20th. That's gearing up to be a big recruiting weekend in Eugene. In fact, every weekend is going to be a big recruiting weekend in June for Oregon. They're going to host as many yeah. blue chippers as any program in the country. You wait and see. But Trey McNutt just had a really good visit to Oregon. Said he had a great time. The biggest takeaway was the staff. He said the staff has set the bar by showing what he means to their program. So he feels like of all the programs that he has in his final eight, Oregon has the biggest need for him. And they emphasize how much they want Oregon to be his home. Uh, um, he said since day one, Coach Lanning's been super real with him. And he just thinks that this program's on the verge of breaking through. And uh, when he watched them practice this weekend, he said he could tell that they want to win a national championship, and that's their aim. And he could see himself being part of that culture. All right, let's head out to USC, where the number one player in the 2026 class, Jakeem Stewart, who was just recently at Ohio State. He was at USC now for the spring game. Uh, how did it go with the number one player in the 26 class? Oh, fantastic. I mean, USC has a, has a great shot to land Jakeem Stewart. Him and his, him and his uh, uh, private coach, Clyde Alexander, they think that Eric Henderson's the best defensive line coach in college football for what he did in the NFL, coaching guys like Aaron Donald, winning a Super Bowl. You know, he had a long conversation with Lincoln Riley, and, and, and Riley looked at him and said, what other place in the country that you're considering has these kind of resources? And he's talking about not just what USC provides academically and from a football standpoint with this revamped defensive coaching staff, but just L.A. and what they offer uh, as far as, uh, um, you know, everything that that brings to the table. And, and so uh, <laughs> he's going to come back to camp in June and uh, – uh, I, I, it's just that this was his third time at USC, Josh. So he's going to, that'll be his fourth time in June. If he reclassifies, he'll also take an official visit. So that's five times, you know, talking to some people that spent time with Jakeem out there, they feel really good about USC's chances as well. But the vision for him that they have as a player, uh, just coach Henderson and his presence there. Skylar Jones is another defensive line coach at USC that they're very excited about. So it was a great visit. He's going to be at the USC LSU game to open the season. Uh, talking to Clyde Alexander, that's going to be a very big visit for Jakeem. Those are two of his favorite teams. Ohio State's in the mix. Texas is also in the mix. Miami. Uh, but LSU and USC, he's going to be there in Las Vegas when they open the season. And USC is definitely a program that's got a great chance to land our number one ranked player in 2026, who maybe will end up in the 2025 class. It, it, these visits take a different look depending on if he reclassifies or not. These visits, if he's a 2026 recruit, are the foundation of his recruitment moving forward. Some of these teams will be locked in as favorites, but we don't really know which way it's going to go. But if he's a 2025 recruit, Steve, what do your power rankings look like right now for Jakeem Stewart if he is going to reclassify? Well, he said last weekend that Ohio State was his best visit that he's had of his process. But if you kind of follow the visits, it'd be hard not to put USC in pole position 
certainly LSU. Over LSU yeah. right now? Great visit to Miami. It just seems like this is a young man that's got a keen eye on leaving the state too. Now, I'm not saying he's not going to end up at LSU. Texas, though, is in the heart of this yeah. one. Miami, Ohio State, and USC. LSU's got his work cut out for them to keep this young man in state because he's certainly given these other programs a heck of a chance. And he's going to be at Oregon this coming weekend for the Ducks spring game. And we know Oregon's going to make a big impression. They always do. All right. Well, the way that they're playing, where their program's at, Dan Lanning's one of the top head coach recruiters in the country. We certainly expect to be talking about Jakeem Stewart next weekend as one of the blue chippers that has a fabulous time out in Eugene. Yep, lock it in. We're going to be talking about Jakeem Stewart next week. Promise you guys that. All right, Steve, you, you got to talk to Tennessee fans right now. You put in a recruiting prediction machine in favor of the Vols. Tell us what and who you are predicting. Well, I like Tennessee for on 300 receiver Radarius Jackson out of Memphis, kind of worked with Austin Price on this story, wrote in the Wilt Fong whip around late last week that he was someone I was close to forecasting the Tennessee, locked that pick in. He's got a decision date. We're going to broadcast his commitment on the on three platform on Monday at 1 p.m. And we like Tennessee. You know, the Vols pushing for a top 10 recruiting class. And this is one of their top overall players on the board. Certainly one of the best football players in the state. Uh, makes an impact in all three facets of the game. He had 782 yards rushing and nine touchdowns. Had 30 receptions for nearly 700 yards. 13 more scores. Picked off eight passes, Josh. Returned two of them for touchdowns. Also had a punt return for a score. This guy is a fantastic <laughs> football player on Friday nights. Josh Heupel and company covet him. I like the way it's trending going into the announcement. And this is a guy, you already have George McIntyre in the fold, the quarterback, looking to get some dynamic guys around him. Radarius Jackson certainly fits the bill. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Auburn round out the final four. All right, you guys can find that right here on the On3 Recruits channel at 1 p.m. Central Time on Monday. Steve Wiltfong, thank you for dropping by the Inside Scoop. We're going to talk tomorrow morning on the Wiltfong Whip Around about everything else that happened in recruiting. Everyone is talking about the Texas spring game, so let's attack it from the recruiting angle. I got Justin Wells on this video from Inside Texas. We're going to hit on a few of the biggest names that were in Austin over the weekend. But first, Texas fans, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruit channel. We love talking Longhorn recruiting, so jump on board. Hit subscribe for me, please. All right. Let's bring on Justin Wells from inside Texas. We'll start with linebacker Riley Pettijan, McKinney, Texas. We talk about him all the time. Borderline five-star. You already put in a prediction for him to Texas, but what did you learn about his recruitment this weekend? I, I learned that I feel really good about my prediction to Texas. Um, you know, Elijah Barnes, there's two big-time linebackers in DFW for 2025 that Texas loves. Elijah Barnes and Riley Pettijan. Both were supposed to take their decisions closer to you know june, june post visits right and honestly you know barnes just decided he was done peta john i think is still gonna probably take those visits but i still love where texas is at uh he's gonna see ohio state he's gonna try to see usc he's got a few other places lined up but texas is in a great great position with riley peta john right now the kid ran a 10-7 last week I mean, at the linebacker position, high end, four star, exactly what Johnny Nansen and this bunch need to do. Texas only took two, uh, one linebacker in the last cycle. Uh, Ty Anthony Smith out of Jasper when they flipped the, flipped the A&M guy. And so uh, Pettijohn is just as important as Barnes. And getting to see him and his family uh, was, was a treat on Saturday. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I think they, uh, they left in, with the same admiration they had when they showed up. <laughs> All right. Well, are you going to improve your confidence? I think, if I remember correctly, you got Riley Pettijohn at like 65%. Is that still indicative of how you feel? Actually, I would increase that. Um, you know, we, we're trying to gather everything. Yesterday was such a crazy. – so crazy. Uh, there's some things – you know, there's some RPMs I'm considering putting in this week, and we'll talk about a couple of those recruits too. But, um, yeah, I, I, I could increase that. I, I feel good there, man. Mm -hmm. I, just think, I just think it makes too much sense. There's a really natural fit there, a natural organic relationship with, 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 the, with the program and, and with the school. Um, you're right. I could. I might. Uh, all right. you gotta, all right. they, just tell fans they have to continually click it in at on, on three, go to on three recruits, refresh 
the RPM board. If they'll do that about every five, 10 minutes all day long. You might see it go up. You might see it. All right. Last week on Thursday when you were on the show, I asked you about running back James Simon. At the time, he was trending heavily to LSU, but after LSU picks up uh, TJ Lindsay, JT Lindsay, I'm sorry, JT Lindsay to go along with Harlan Barry, it just seems like James Simon is going to be destined to be a Texas Longhorn, but I know he's taken other visits. Now, you spoke to him coming out of his Texas visit this weekend. How do you feel about James Simon? Yeah, um, Simon's been busy. He's been on the road. He went to LSU, Alabama, Texas A&M, um, and this was the last stop. He was actually supposed to hit Miami, I think, next weekend, but that that's not going to happen now. This was his last stop. And just catching up with him, you know, him and his family were there, his dad, his brother. Um, they loved it. You know, Choice, Coach Choice and Coach Sarkeesian, they really they, they sold him on being a member of this class and how he would fit. But really, it was the spring game. He loved the the action that the running backs were getting. He sees himself as a fit in this offense, watching Jaden Blue, watching C.J. Baxter, watching a Trey Wisner, and then seeing freshmen like Jarrett Gibson and, and Christian Clark getting getting some carries as well tells him, you know, he would have the opportunity to play early if he needed to. I think the biggest thing with James is he only has one official visit scheduled, and that's mm -hmm. Texas for June 21st to the 23rd. Uh, he kind of let it out that a May decision could be in the works, and I think that's actually probably accurate. I, I don't think this thing is going to last too much longer unless there's a big shift in the Jordan Davidson recruitment. And, and I don't see that happening. I think James Simon in Texas just makes too much sense. Uh, he's a fit what they're doing. Uh, Choice, Choice and Sark, just, you know, they, 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 they made sure they doubled down on the fact that they love him and they think he would be a great fit. And so he stayed overnight, too. He was in Austin yeah. for three days. And I think a lot of times those guys get caught up in those visits. They get caught up in the, all the atmosphere and the environment. And then when you're hearing what you want to hear from the coaches, it's just a really good time. And so James Simon in Texas, if they weren't close when we talked last week, they are certainly there now. All right. We'll keep an eye on James Simon. Uh, the next wide receiver or the next prospect I want to talk about was a bit of a surprise. There weren't a whole lot of surprises this weekend because you guys at Inside Texas do a great job confirming all these uh, recruits coming in. But there was one, and that was wide receiver Kelshawn Johnson. He was expected to be out in California for that USC spring game, but he showed up in Austin. He's been there a bunch. Is this a sign that maybe he's shutting things down and could be added to the Texas commit list soon? Absolutely. I, I, I think with Kelshawn, you know, I spoke to him, I believe it was Thursday or Friday, we, re we reported that he canceled the USC trip right. and that he was coming back. And this was going to be the first opportunity for his mom to come to campus because usually it's with coaches, other recruits, other players, you know, teammates mm -hmm. of that sport. And so Kelshawn came out of that, you know, if, if he, the best thing that a wide receiver, best position you could have seen in the spring game was the wide receiver. And the fact that a, a, a true freshman early enrollee that just turned 18 and Ryan Wingo went off tells you enough that that right there is a sales pitch. And so I, I think Kelshawn and, and Texas, they have a great relationship. I think Texas wants four, in this class, I know DeCorey and Moore or Jamie and Jamie French are the priority guys, right. the 1A, the 1B. And I, and I know they love Marcus Harris out of modern day. They're in good standing with Andrew Marsh, uh, Kalik Lockett Kalik in Texas. Lockett, yeah, we can't are, forget about him. They're looking really good, too. And and so, but, you know, Kelshawn's a guy that I think in the next few weeks, we're going to see a couple dominoes. Okay. And we're going to see a few spots start to get filled in because the longer Kelshawn waits, I think the less likely he would end up in this class. So if he goes ahead and jumps in, he's got a, an array of, of, of official visits in June. He'll be in Austin in mid-June. I, I, I think that's coming to an end. If he wants to be in this class, I think he's going to have to make some pretty hard decisions in the next few few weeks. But the fact that he was able to bring his family, I think was big. Mm -hmm. They love Chris Jackson. They love Sark. Those guys compare him to Xavier Worthy. They tell him, look, you've got that speed, that quickness that you can fill in, fill in there. Um, makes a lot of sense, not to mention he's a, he's a dog on the track and he's an absolute great point guard in basketball. He took Hitchcock to the 3A state championship last year. And so he, he's, he's a very well-rounded multi-sport kid. I love where Texas is there, but I think he's going to need to get his spot. Arkansas is in the mix. USC is in the mix. Texas A&M is still kind of flirting with him a little bit. But if he wants to, if he wants to be in Texas class of 2025, I think he's going to have to make a decision in the next few weeks.
it and it feels like that's the way it's trending. So we'll keep an eye on him as well. Yeah, I think it's Texas to lose, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, you hit on a couple things that I want to talk about. There was a game held in Austin, and Arch Manning, he went off. He reminded everybody he is who he is for a reason. Uh, quarterback Trey Owens also looked good. You hit on Ryan Wingo, the freshman wide receiver who's just been on campus for a couple weeks. He went off. What does all this do for recruiting? Everything. Yeah. If there's if there's one thing, if, there, if it's not the NFL draft – it's coming to these games and watching these young players play because they know they'll have the opportunity. And every player, ready, whether they're ready or not, wants that opportunity to play early. They don't want to sit if they don't have to. And so watching Ryan Wingo go off, watching Trey Owens look tremendous mm -hmm. as your that, that's your third string quarterback there. And then again, Arch Manning. I mean, it, it's hard not to not to not to see that and not to envision yourself. KJ Lacey was on campus. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, uh, uh, on Saturday, and and he was able to be there. And and you know who showed up on campus today? Keelan Russell out of Duncanville. Uh, and okay. so, you know, it, that, that position's going to get interesting. Yeah. But when you watch Arch Manning and Trey Owens and what they did, you know, Sark wants to go vertical. He's got two guys there to do it. I mean, name a better backup quarterback in college football than Arch Manning. And I think I think our guy JD Bikel put out a video earlier talking about you know there was a lot of innuendo that Manning is only a five-star because of his last name. He'd be a yeah. three-star if he had any other last name. And that's just it's about as silly as you can get. That kid is – he's ready. He's just he's just waiting in the wings. Quinn Ewers has the job. He's the incumbent. He's the guy that's going to have a big year for them. But he hasn't been healthy. He hasn't played a full season in, since high school. And so Arch is a guy that I think if, if Sark gave the keys to him during the middle of SEC play, that would feel pretty comfortable. I think he would come out there and do pretty well. But for recruiting, it's huge because they see the opportunity. You know, you ask a DeCorian Moore when he came to visit a couple weeks ago and he got to watch the live scrimmage, what stood out? He said, Ryan Wingo. He's like, if a true freshman that just enrolled can get in the rotation and, and make plays, I can do that. So they see themselves. They envision themselves. So anytime, anytime you have good play at any position, I think it helps with recruiting. But the younger guys – it shows that Sark will absolutely play the best player. And I think that's why we're going to see Wingo a lot this fall. Yeah. yeah. And Texas was the place to be for spring games. Probably the most exciting weekend of all the spring games. Uh, you guys did an incredible job at Inside Texas. We only hit on the highlights. You guys, Texas fans, go check out Inside Texas. They have it all covered. Football, recruiting, everything. Great job. Justin Wells, appreciate you stopping by the Inside Scoop today. Nothing but love, Josh. The transfer portal is absolutely on fire. We're seeing more names enter. We're seeing visits being taken. And we are seeing guys starting to commit. In Colorado, they're one of the teams that's starting to add some talent. I told you guys, Colorado is going to binge and purge. Last week was the binge. Guys leaving the program. Now we're starting to see the purge. Guys starting to jump on board. We're going to find out what Colorado has cooking in this video. I got portal expert Pete Nakos on with us. And we're going to get into it all. But first... This message over the weekend from Cormani McClain. Good question. What are some things you're looking forward to at your next place? What are some things you're looking forward to at your next place? I'm just ready to bring an old version of me out and change the narrative of everyone's thinking on my name. Be a part of a real and a great program that's going to impact me at my best ability. And... Yeah, ready to get to a new place and get to work. And some people just gotta take a step, step back from things sometimes. Certain people, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I feel like I just don't wanna play for the class. I just wanna be involved with a great leading program that's gonna develop players. This is the video that he posted over the weekend. Cormani McLean says he wants to play for, quote, a real and great program, and I don't wanna play for clicks. Okay. But that's a big shift in energy from his recruitment. One of the top DBs in America had everybody talking. A little Here's a little refresher on some of the highlights of his recruitment. He committed to Miami in December. He was late to his own commitment in that December window. He announced to Miami that day, shocking everybody because they thought it was going to be the Florida Gators. Then about a week or two later, he goes to the Under Armour game, and he was repping Miami, the team that he was committed to. But rumors were already swirling that something was up. Then Miami was supposed to sign him in that February National Signing Day window. On that day, his mom tweets out the morning, false alarm. There'd be no signing. 
So remember, this wasn't about the clicks because he he was going to have a little signing at his school, commit or sign with Miami and then go and roll. But instead, he goes to million dollars worth of game podcast and commits to Colorado, flips his commitment with Gilly and Wallow standing there. Gilly gets down on one knee and a year later, he's gone. Gilly didn't do this for Cormani McClain to transfer after one year, but that's what happens. And then this weekend, I felt like it got a little messy. Reports go out that Cormani's heading to the portal. He confirms that with a thank you note. But in his note, he never thinks Coach Prime. He thanks a couple people. He thanks his defensive coordinator. But he doesn't thank Coach Prime. Then the video we just watched came out. And this came out over the weekend. And the video itself is Cormani in his own words. Take him at his words or not. But after the video is posted, he sends a more definitive message about what's happening. He pins a post from a commenter, and here's the post. And I don't really like this. If this is how you feel, then just say it. Instead, he takes the word of a YouTube commenter and pins it. The real message here, by pinning that, he's basically saying that Coach Prime played favorites and he wasn't one of them. And I think if you're going to make a video with an explanation of why you left and you're going to at least say what you want to say, don't use... Don't use the comment section to do your dirty work. I kind of felt like that was happening with Cormani McLean here. You guys let me know. Comment section below. How do you guys feel about Cormani McLean's thank you letter? How do you guys feel about the video? I'll link the video in the description below as well. All right. Let's bring on on threes Pete Nakos. And Pete, uh, where should we? Let's start with Cormani McLean. He says he doesn't want to play for clicks. So I would think that USC being in Hollywood and California might be a place where there's some clicks. Now USF respectfully doesn't get as many clicks. And we, in the beginning, when he first hit the portal, we thought the USF bulls were in good shape to get him. What are you hearing now as the weekend is coming to an end? You know, Cormani McLean didn't go on any visits this weekend. And for me, that kind of surprises me, right? He announced early this past week to Hayes Fawcett of Ron three, that he's going to hit the portal um, he obviously put this video out this weekend, at, uh, which really makes clear where he wants to, to go to school. Um, so for having some conversation that every, with some sources today, he hasn't made any plans for any visits. I, this is going to be a slower process than personally I anticipated. Um, UCF and USF keep coming up in conversations. By no means those are those locks. Um, you know, I've heard Memphis would really love to, to, to make a, 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 an offer to Cormani McLean, and I think there's some other – a uh, high major group of five schools that would really like to get in that mix too. In terms of power five or, or power four, as we should say now, Josh, I haven't heard of many schools. I think a lot of schools um, have been turned off by kind of how everything ended at Colorado and maybe some of Deion Sanders comments. I think that this is going to take some time. Um, I think Cormani McLean has a lot of upside and, and he probably just needs to find the school to really show it. All right, we'll see what happens there with the former five-star DB now in the portal. Uh, another top recruit in the portal, Jaden Rashada. He had a lot of ups and downs in his recruitment as well. I don't think I'm going to break that one down in this video, but Jaden Rashada, Arizona State quarterback, he's in the portal. What are we hearing about Jaden Rashada? So, you know, uh, I broke the news on uh, Thursday night. It was that he was going to hit the portal, and then he officially hits Friday, and I'm told by multiple sources uh, close to his camp and at, at Georgia that he was planning to take a visit Monday or Tuesday next week. So I'll put that out there. Um, but the, the timeline's going to push back, as he's Fawcett reported later on uh it was Saturday, excuse me, my timeline's a little messed up. He's put out there that uh, Jaden's going to push back that visit uh, another week, and he's not going to be there until late April. Um, Talked to some other people, and, and I think 20 schools have reached out in total. I've heard a lot about North Carolina on my end and, and, and LSU. Uh, he's already brought up uh, Auburn and Mississippi State, too. So won't be surprised if Jaden Rashada takes a few visits. I think he really had to rush that Arizona State decision with the way things happen at Florida. So – not going to rush this one, but I still really like where Georgia sits. All right. We'll keep an eye on that one. Colorado starting to add some pieces. I saw Peyton Kirkland just jumped on board. Literally, as we're taping this, Colorado's racking up commitments. They've got three already. Now, they had six transfers on campus. They've already landed three. How do you feel about Colorado's haul, and is there more to come? You know, uh, what I really liked is I thought the six guys they brought in this weekend are all really talented. And it seems like at times last spring, Josh, you and I talked about this, maybe the, the, the guys they weren't bringing in 
maybe, I don't know if they were going to help Colorado out immediately, but it seems like this spring they've really got some guys who can be contributors. You bring in the Texas transfer, Peyton Kirkland, right, offensive tackle, who's a, who's a big help. And then um, earlier today they, they landed Dayon Hill, the top available edge rusher in the portal. And then you top that off by uh, the Ohio defensive tackle, Rayan Buell, who's kind of underrated but had a really productive season for the Bobcats. Those are three guys who can be instant impact players. And and uh, Peyton Kirkland also has a little ways to go probably compared to the other two, but – um, a, a big guy who can really help out the line this year and was really become a revamped offensive line this offseason for the Buffs. All right. Now, I wanted to talk about Alabama. It looks like Kalen DeBoer is getting active in the portal right now. They're about to land a kicker. Tell us about Graham Nicholson. Graham Nicholson, Miami, Ohio, the reigning Lou Groza Award uh, winner, uh, which goes to the top place kicker in college football. Um, you know, uh, Alabama has had really good kicking success re- recently with Will Record, um, and obviously he's off to the draft and will probably be one of the, the top names called at the kicking position uh, this week in the draft. So big, big spot actually on the roster for Kalen DeBoer to fill. Maybe not like the, the, the one all Alabama fans were thinking about going into the portal, but would be a really nice pickup. I've heard a visit is in the works, but have not yet to hand their home uh, an official date yet for that visit. All right. Last week on Thursday, we talked about Penny Boone. Uh, he was from Toledo, transferred to Louisville, but was putting his name back in the portal. Uh, did Penny Boone officially hit the portal, and what's going on with his recruitment? Yeah, you know, some interesting developments. So he actually did go officially in the portal, as I initially reported he was going to, but um, was also told by sources in his camp that he was going to visit Washington and Ole Miss um, over these like next five days, he was supposed to be at Washington starting Friday. He never made it to Seattle. Uh, the Ole Miss visit kind of seems to be on ice for the moment. We'll see how that one plays out. But then talked to someone Saturday night, uh, really close to uh, Penny again. And uh, going back to Louisville is actually very much on the table. Was told like upwards of 30%. There is a chance he does that. Um, other schools who've been in the mix are Colorado, Georgia, and a few others. Um Colorado obviously had Dallin Hayden on campus this past weekend, so we'll see how that one plays out. But if mm-hmm. the Buffs need a running back, I think Penny Boone uh, would definitely be in the cards. All right, Louisville fighting back a little bit here in the transfer portal. Now, the last name we've got to hit on is Houston wide receiver Sam Brown. He entered the portal this weekend, and it seems like there's a lot of demand. Who's involved with Sam Brown early on? Yeah, uh, talking to some sources, I really like LSU, Texas A&M, and Miami. Um, right, Miami has a lot to offer. All of a sudden, sort of right with the, the Cam Ward pickup this off season, yeah. gives a really good quarterback. LSU was maybe the winner of the winter transfer portal in terms of getting wide receivers, um, but I think Sam Brown just offers so much in stretching the field um, that I think that LSU wants to see if, if Sam's interested. And from what I've been told, there is some interest. And then Texas A&M, uh, right, staying inside uh, Texas is, is attractive to, to Sam and. Uh, he's expected to make a visit to, to College Station at some point this week. Um, so he is the number two available wide receiver in the portal right now, beyond Keandre Lambert-Smith. And mm-hmm. uh, for, for some schools who might miss out on Keandre, he, he presents a really attractive uh, uh, wideout. All right. A lot going on in the portal. Pete Nagos, Von 3, you guys do an incredible job of reporting on it all. Thanks for taking a little bit of time on this Sunday to drop by the Inside Scoop. Much appreciated, Josh. Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed that, go check out the hundreds of videos that we have on this channel. And also do me a favor, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel.